Last year, around this time, I shared a video on YouTube detailing my adventures with the optical snoot. This time around, we got the actual better version of it, the lens assisted optical snoot. And this video will focus on the version sold by actually Strobe Pro. With this lens assisted optical snoot, we can get to this result much faster than before. Let's see how. Now, before we go any further, if this is your first time on this channel or you do not know what an optical snoot is, I invite you to check out this video. It is filled with the basics of what a, an actual snoot is and their limitations or actually what they can do at any time. Also, a second note, this is not a sponsored video about this unit myself and uh, no one gets to tell me what I actually think of it or actually what it does. The reason why I'm reviewing it because in case you're interested in buying it, well, here's a review and no one paid me to do this video, although if you do buy one from the link, I also get a small affiliate commission for the referral. Thank you. Now that's out of our way. What is so different around this time with this optical snoot? Well, a whole lot of things. The basic premise remains the same, but most of the elements that you can find inside of this actual snoot is really improved. The Stropro optical snoot is built differently than the previous disco snoot, as it has a removable lens, and this is a major element. The lens itself makes the suit much more flexible as you have ultimate control over the focus area. In the previous iteration of the snoot that I reviewed, the permanent lens had to be focused with a knob and the thread size was quite large and imprecise. This made for very blurry lines and difficult to get, result that you like, especially if you were in a hurry. It was also a frustrating experience, as I said in the previous video, that the build quality is actually not so great and is actually quite heavy also. But with this iteration, there are significant improvements to make this modifier actually much more work friendly. So the lens that you see here is the Sigma 7300. It is not known to be the best lens ever made and I got it from eBay for about 75 US dollars. Again, from eBay. And there's a good reason why I actually bought this from eBay and on the cheapest lens possible. I'll explain to you why later in the video. But the big advantage again of the optical snoot assisted with this is the focus function enables us to get ultra sharp lines which you would not get with the previous version of this snoot. And also here's a little tangent and the next section that you'll see here is a little speculative so I'll turn it black and white so you know when the end of the tangent is actually happening. So this particular lens has a macro focusing mode and I think it helps. So the macro mode I believe gives it a small edge. I haven't tested it with another lens that doesn't have it, but the ability to focus closer, like much, much closer, is should be a distinctive advantage of any classical lens, right? The macro mode allows for the modifier to be used in like a much, much smaller range of lighting versus a classic range due to its breathing uh, capabilities. It's because it goes macro, it goes actually really close. For example, the Sigma 7300 only allows me to enter macro mode when I, I'm zooming at like 200 millimeter plus. This though creates a little more complexity in manipulation, but I for one welcome the additional level of control that you get from using something so cheap. And if you can actually live with a small vignetting from the lens out of the barrel, well, you can definitely create some incredible amounts of work. And of tangent. There's a textured glass that serves as a diffusion panel inside of the snoot. This seems to show up in the actual light, so if ever you blast, let's say, a SL60 through it, you can actually see it. The panel itself cuts about a couple of stops, which I'll list the number, exact number here, of light. But my thinking here is that when they designed this, in order to diffuse the actual light, that was the best available solution to avoid hot spots and have a more even light. As you know, when you have little particles, it actually diffuses the light a little more faster. I would have almost preferred a smooth frosted glass element versus having a little particle um, just because I don't like to see the texture, especially when you're shooting on a human being, especially if you're using that for skin. That's just my personal preference. Also a note on gobo inserts. The gobo inserts are almost a square piece of metal and can only hold one pattern at a time versus the previous one which had two that you can reverse. They measure at 6 cm or 2.36 inches, a little smaller than the previous model. The inserts fit very tightly inside of the round card holder and my first time around, I had to struggle a little to put it in and actually because it was really tight. After a few tries, it seemed to have loosened up and it resolved itself with time. Now, now I can just really plug them in and I'm done. Also the Gobo inserts, the actual cards, are actually significantly thinner and do look a lot sharper than the previous insert 
and this might make the DIY method a lot more complicated since the metal cards is so thin. Also, after a bit of research on the gobos, the gobo seems to be manufactured by the same people that do the mag bot or the mag beam, I'm sorry, modifier. You can always also call it almost the alternative version of this modifier if ever you are a mag mod user. So if you need additional patterns that are not available on the actual Stroper website, look out for those. Also, uh, after further research, I found another set of gobos that can actually fit inside of the slot. These are available mostly in China, so do keep that in mind. I did link them below if ever you're looking for some really crazy patterns. Shipping is slow because China, but there are a slew of patterns available for really, really cheap prices. So if you're not in a rush and you want to get these right now, order them immediately and they'll get in your house. For me, it took about three weeks to a month. Also, a note on build quality. We'll start with the positives. The first impressions that I shared on Instagram is that the unit is very, very light compared to the previous optical snoot. I mean, this unit without the lens mirror a, like, I mean, a couple of pounds, like not even a pound, and I'll be listing here the exact measurement. It wouldn't be fair to measure this without the lens, so you have to factor this in. The material of this snoot seems to be made of aluminum chassis for the main chamber. Compared to the other one, it looked like better quality, a lot more lighter, and also a lot less stressful for the actual strobe. Now the negatives. There are no way to easily rotate the strobe to adjust the pattern to a desired rotation. This is a big drawback from the cheaper model, as you can do this by basically twisting out the thing and then rotating it. And again, this is an issue if you want to change something on the fly. But again, as I said in the previous video, this tool is not made to have fast lighting, although it is much, much easier than to use before but it's something that I would have appreciated seeing in that particular snoot model. Also, the lens mount is a little tight and I cringe a little every time I insert a lens on the snoot. This is why I also recommend getting something very, very cheap because I wouldn't put super expensive Canon L glass on this and this is why eBay exists. The mount release is also a little awkward. The push lever to release the lens is needs a very, very firm push and not that it's impossible to press, but I struggle a little at the first. I thought that a button would be better, but this is probably called a cost saving measure uh, to get this unit done at a much cheaper rate than having uh, just this as a button. So again, this is probably less expensive. I can see here a little button being in and out. Power loss. Also, the snoot removes a ton of power from the flash and it might be again a lens issue. In my test, I was shooting at one to one and I had to open up the camera's aperture quite a lot to let the light have any effect at all in my scene. So if you're planning to use a weaker light or something like a speed light, you should consider maybe switching that light to your more actual powerful strobe or actually open up your f-stop to very, very shallow numbers. Also, getting a gobo shape to be small requires again a very small gobo insert pattern. So basically the pattern you see inside should be tiny. Again, nothing new here, but it's actually worth mentioning in case you want to get something on someone's face. Now, what can we do with this thing? Well, this time I really went quick and I did a whole lot, a whole lot faster. Time for some behind the scenes. So in order to get a clean shot or a clean pattern with the previous model, I had tons and tons of finicking to do and trial and error. With this actual optical snoot, you can get results in like five minutes. I went from shooting something very close up to something to the background without much frustration and it's really freeing not dealing with the terrible focusing issues of the previous model. Again, there wasn't issues, it was just a design flaw. In order to get the light perfectly aligned also, you will need a really solid modeling knife so do get anything over 30 watts. And that's related to the point about the difficulty of having to insert the lens. Having a light blasting through a lens for a very long time, even though you keep it on or basically you just shoot through it, it can be good for the long term for this lens. You might get really crappy results after a while. Hence why I suggest getting a cheapo Canon glass, again, which should be widely available on either Facebook Marketplace or on eBay. With that said, I'm keeping this note this time around. The build quality paired with the even more widely available Gobo inserts makes this tool really extremely valuable in my bag. And because of the availability, now there's like unlimited patterns available almost. It offers much sharper results and I can get there much faster and I can modulate this if I don't like this thing anymore well I can get something much cheaper or much more expensive depending on my needs. Again, this has been a key tool when you press the time. 
Now, if you want to support your own art and also support this channel, you'll find a link to the Stropro Snoot actually right there. And if you also are a little more adventurous, it's also available on eBay. And again, keep in mind it's from eBay. So if ever you have any issues with your actual snoot or the actual lens, well, you'll get close to zero support. Keep that in mind. But it's available for a little less money in this location. But if you're a US resident then you buy from Canada, you'll save money eventually, so you save. And also please remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment to feed the algorithm or answer any questions you might have regarding the optical snoot from Stroke Pro. This has been Evans B, Montreal Advertising and Portrait Photographer. Again, I want to thank you for watching. And remember, together, let's light the world. Cheers.